500 million years ago. The microcontinent was situated near the equator. The Western scientists called it Kazakhstania. The structure with almost full list of elements from the Mendeleev stable inside its depth. What secrets does Kazakhstan soil have? How rich is it? Natural resources are the history of our land for thousands of years. Gold, the most important element of the financial system of the world. It has never lost its value since the day a human first discovered it. Gold is not just a beautiful metal, it is durable, non-corrosive, and its reserves are not so large. Only three swimming pools could be filled with all gold that has been ever mined in the human history. Gold is a world currency. Coins made of yellow metal have changed the course of history. Over two and a half thousand years ago, trade relations that still exist nowadays were established due to gold coins. But today, we are talking not about gold coins that once people verified by biting with teeth. Today, they are gold bars with weight reaching up to 20 kilograms with fineness of 4 nines. These gold bars are guarantor of economic stability of any country. The more state possesses this precious metal, the higher its fiscal stability is. Currently, the World Bank reserves are estimated as 33,182 tons. Kazakhstan occupies the 15th place in the list. Our gold reserves are estimated at almost 250 tons. They are exactly to guarantee financial safety of the country. Национальный банк, который управляет международными резервами, он может как пополнять, так и использовать. The National Bank, which manages the international reserves, is able to fill them up or decide how to use them in particular cases. Therefore, international reserves include hard currency, which is kept abroad. This can be treasury bonds, or this can be commonly used currency such as US dollar, euro plus physical gold. At the moment, international reserves are over 29 billion dollars, 10 billions of which is gold. 19 billion dollars are freely convertible currency. As of January 2017, the assets of the national fund were equal to more than 62 billion dollars. So, these are reserves that ensure stability of the economy of Kazakhstan. Gold reserves of Kazakhstan are replenished through natural resources. It means that all gold produced in the country go to the National Bank, where the financial regulator decides which part should provide the state backup and which part should be used in operations on the foreign market. Fifty-nine percent of gold is stored inside Kazakhstan. The National Bank provides its storage. Forty-one percent is kept abroad. This is the practice of all central banks. In case of necessity to quickly purchase or sell gold, there is no need to waste time and transportation. It provides accessibility to the global markets, where gold can be sold in large amounts. Gold is one of the most widely used metals on the territory of Kazakhstan. Today, there are more than 2,000 gold-bearing deposits in Kazakhstan, including deposits of different sizes, or occurrences and mineralization points. The state balance includes 250 deposits, 
with a total of almost 2,500 tons. The share of Kazakhstan in the global gold market is 1.4%. According to the approved reserves and gold production rates, our country occupies the third place among the former Soviet Union countries after Russia and Uzbekistan. Основные регионы, вообще поставщики золота в республике, это, конечно, Восточный Казахстан, Центральный Казахстан. The main regions that are suppliers of gold are, of course, Eastern, Central and Southern Kazakhstan. About 60% of extracted gold is passing together with non-ferrous metal ores. These polymetallic massive sulfide deposits are porphyry copper. There are fills in the Karitaro reach. Mugajari is a known deposit in Western Kazakhstan. There is a large number of deposits in central Kazakhstan as well, and only 0.5% of production comes from placer deposits. Mainly these are not large deposits. They are concentrated in eastern Kazakhstan, in Jangaria, in the Zailiski Alatau in Almaty region. Thus, domestic geologists are confident that Kazakhstan has enough precious metal for many years ahead. Now gold is extracted in almost all regions of the country. The business in this area actively develops and grows. For example, during the years of independence, production of gold in Kazakhstan has increased more than two times. It is expected to reach 70 tons. In fact, it is quite achievable considering the reserves of gold which Kazakhstan has. Gold jewelry is always found during the excavations of burial mounds. The people who inhabited ancient Kazakhstan knew that soil is rich with gold. Indeed, culture of the gnomons of early Iron Age is one of the most remarkable in the history of mankind. Its significance is as much important as the Hellenic culture. Traces of the great nomads are all over Kazakhstan. They were not just steppe people, but excellent mineralogists and metallurgists. Even today, geologists still find gold following their trails. Gold was mined here on the territory of Kazakhstan. Now production of non-ferrous and precious metals is based on ancient developments. Geologists followed the tracks of ancient mines. They discovered new fields. Basically, everything is based on ancient mines. Many known fields of Jeskazgan, East Kazakhstan, Central and Southern Kazakhstan can prove it. The mines are located near the site where the ancient mines were, and during excavation works, furnaces' tools are found there. There are tools they use during the extraction processing of metal. Nobans had a special weakness for yellow gold, so they generously decorated their clothes and weapons with it. For them, Gold meant fire from the heaven, the power, and immortality because it cannot be destroyed just like the sun. Nomads had highly developed technique of mining and processing of metals including precious and non-ferrous and ferrous metals. The fact is that they were producing weapons that were convenient for them, jewelry that symbolized their mythological and religious concept. Therefore, they needed things that responded to their thoughts, that were comfortable for them. Among archaeologists, there is a perception that Saka tribes used gold jewelry for ritual purposes. The high was the rank of a deceased, the rich was the tomb. However, the restoration artist Krim Altenbekov believes that ancient Nomans liked to adorn themselves with gold in their everyday life. They were in their life, 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 they were in their
По их отоверованиям, человек не умирает, а уходит. They also wore this jewelry during their lifetime as a sort of ceremonial dress. According to their beliefs, a human does not die, but goes to another world. Thus, he or she was dressed into the same ceremonial robes when being led to rest. But not only gold jewelry accompanied the deceased. To make the afterlife trip more comfortable, Nomans put into grave a number of weapons and mills. And favorite horses of the dead person were also decorated and buried. The fact is that in the 5th 8th centuries the people wore items made of thick metal. We can see a lot of repaired things that shows they were worn by people during their lifetime. We see traces of wear out. Grimal Tendekov is the restoration artist with four-year experience. He has not just learned the culture of ancient nomads, but also recreated images of Saka kings from ashes. One of his last works is the Gold Princess, whose tomb was discovered in the west of Kazakhstan. Sarmadian woman was dressed in rich attire. As the burial place was not disturbed before, the gold decorations of beautiful women were kept safe. Such laboratory analysis as X-ray scanning and tomography were done. We got interesting information. This reconstruction was made after conservation and restoration, and now it is demonstrated in our museum. It is interesting that it is a rare case when the shape and size of hardware were preserved well. These rooms of gold jewelry gave us exact dimensions and information about the production technology. The technology is very elegant and filigree. The women from the Sama tribe wear a conical headwear with a figure of mountain goat in its top. They are actually made of a native gold of the highest quality. On the clothes, archaeologists also discovered temple decorations and plaques of different shapes with heads of griffins and rams. There are two gold bracelets weighing more than 300 grams. On her neck, the princess had a type of golden torque with a weight of 431 grams. In total, 119 items, which were made of yellow metal, were found in Ural Princess Town. All of the artifacts prove that Sama tribes knew how to extract pure gold in the 6th century before Christ. At that time, there were different levels of fineness, starting from 300, and ending with the highest four nines. At that time they did like this, as much they had and as much they mixed. The same product could have different levels of fineness. Basically, when they made jewelry, they used gold with the highest standard. But they were ligature in any way, because pure gold is soft and wears out quickly. Ligatures were different. Mainly it was gold and silver, and sometimes copper. Scientists have still to figure out how Samadians smelt gold of different levels of fineness, without modern tools and chemistry skills. For several millennia, people invented a lot of methods to extract the purest precious metal. In modern world, chemistry is the science that explores all these processes. A 
as miners say, one of the main problems of the industry are ores containing finely disseminated gold and silver sulfides. Experts estimate that 40% of the world reserves of the precious metal are contained in such mineral formations. But now new methods are developed for such complicated ores. Our company is engaged into the development of gold deposits. It is worth noting that in 2011 we have been working on the modernization of equipment. After the upgrade, we have increased capacity of gold ore production up to 1 million tons. Also, we have implemented South African technology in the factory. This technology has facilitated extraction of valuable metal of arsenic and gold copper ores. Just before the introduction of new technology, method of extracting gold from low-grade ores was not available for us. But now it has become possible and economically profitable for us. So what was the golden key which got into the hands of miners? This new method is called biohydrometology. Simply put, it's bacterial leaching. It is based on the decomposition of sulfides by special microorganisms. After opening bacterial sulfide, gold is much easier recovered by cyanidation. This technology has significantly improved the performance. There are several types of deposits in the Agbakai area. Some percentage of gold has the sulfide minerals. And this is the ore we try here, bacteria's oxidized mineral. And thus we can extract the remaining gold, which cannot be extracted by direct cyanidation. This is a research laboratory where microbiologists are testing South African bacteriological technique. Soon the results will be used in the design of Innovator Factory, where the mixed concentrate of Agbakai Gold Recovery Factory will be developed. In other words, in the nearest future, it will be possible to get gold from refractory ores and tailings through bacterial oxidation. We are looking for the best options of the extraction of gold using the most profitable way. Let's say we're doing tests on the ore cyanidation, gravity ore, or flotation and other possible methods. Before we send ore to production in the factory, we initially conduct research in the laboratory to determine the additives of various reagents time, conditions for technology, and then we transport the ore to the factory. Each ore has individual properties, and we select corresponding conditions for it. Mining of gold started in ancient times. By now, the yellow metal reserves have not been exhausted largely due to discovering a few methods of production. The first gold was collected directly from the Earth's surface, in the form of nuggets by people of the Bronze Age. When the amount of readily available metal declined, a human learned to fish it from the mouths of the rivers, with the help of animal skins. Probably that's how the ancient Greek myth of Golden Fleece was born. Today, gold is extracted mainly from ores. Miners develop deposits using quarry and mining methods. Usually the precious metal is enclosed in quartz veins. This is one of the most expensive methods of extraction of precious metals. It is more profitable to get gold by incidental way, when noble yellow metal is extracted together with basic minerals such as copper, silver, lead and zinc. Another method is processing of recyclable materials which always includes some part of the gold, too. This is a new, but promising method of modern gold mining industry.
These are deposits of the Agbakai cluster, which produces gold and silver ore directly from eight fields. Miners send it to the Agbakai gold factory. The production capacity of the factory is 1 million tons of ore per year. The final product of the enterprise is a door bar that is a semi-pure alloy of gold and silver. But before we get it, let's follow the whole production cycle consisting of several stages. And this is the very ore with parts of gold rush, which is transported on a conveyor belt to the processing plant. At first the huge stones are downloaded to griddle, which is a machine dividing ore into large and small particles, that will then be sent to the next stage. Large boulders go to the crusher. Now 7-meter mill takes a job. These huge drums carry up to 330 tons of gold blocks per hour. By the way, this method provides up to 70% of designed capacity. The ore that went through several stages of shredding is erased into a powder that is more looks like a cement solution. All raw materials are mixed with cyanide that leaks through the mass and dissolves gold. In other words, the solid particles are converted into liquid. Such a leaching process takes almost a day. After that, the whole mass will go to special absorption tanks. During the chemical reaction, activated charcoal absorbs the gold ions. Final results will be a substance that looks like sand, which is called concentrate, that contains precious metal of about 90%. After concentrate is rinsed and heated, alkaline solution will go through it. That is how the metal is separated from the coal and is collected in a tank, where there are two electrodes of the anode and cathode. After that, through the process of electrolysis, Gold is attracted by the cathode electron. The cathode sediment looks more like a grey sand. That is the future precious metal. Flux is an ingredient that will turn into a true gold. This is a supplement of soda ash, silica sand, borax and sodium nitrate. It will dissolve all the components. After that, this mass crystallizes. The furnace heated up to 1200 degrees turns all ingredients into the molten metal, which is poured into molds for bars to separate gold and silver door slag. Bar goes into the vault, till it will be sent further to the refinery. A slag is returned to the grinding process to eliminate the loss of precious metal. In the door alloy, the gold content is determined in percents. Door alloy is a gold and silver bar. Then, after determining the gold content in percents, the external product is sent to the refining at the factory in Astana to separate silver from gold. The whole chemical process is automated at this factory. The process has closed cycle. Up to three tons of the precious alloy are recovered here per month. The final product will be obtained after treatment of door from foreign substances, such as silver, copper, iron and nickel. This will happen on the refinery. Only there, this boss will be turned into gold with a breakdown of four nines. Gold is one of the most stable tools for investment. This metal has always high price, which means that business that was established on gold mining will flourish for centuries. Meanwhile, the forecast reserves of the Kazakhstan allow to increase the pace of its production, thus attracting new investors to the mining and metallurgical industry of the country. Generally, Kazakhstan taxation is quite liberal. We have a rather low corporate income tax compared to the international standards. Judging by international standards, we do not have a high income tax. 
This is called Park of Innovation Technologies. In general, compared with the global taxation, Kazakhstan system is considered as quite liberal. Therefore, for international companies, there are quite favorable conditions for doing business in Kazakhstan in terms of taxation. According to the ranking of doing business project of the World Bank, annually Kazakhstan is improving its position. By the way, one of the best benefits for the miners in Kazakhstan is a guaranteed buyer who is represented by the state. From my point of view, having a guaranteed buy in time of turbulent economic conditions is good. Therefore, in my opinion, this was done to support the companies. And that's why having a guaranteed buyer that is represented by the state is very profitable. The National Bank fulfills this function here. This, in my opinion, is a definite advantage for mining companies. The adult human body contains 10 milligrams of gold. It accompanies us always and everywhere. But human never fills it enough. It affects our bodies and state security. Yellow shiny metal, which people have worshipped since they had once discovered it. After all, gold is eternal. However, we should all remember that this noble metal cannot be renewed in nature. <laughs>